So this is a little bit of a different episode. This is cut out of the last Noise Boys, pretty much just for time, because it was pushing like two and a half hours, and that's a bit much. It's a big ask. I cut it out, but I didn't think it was good and funny, so I wanted to put it out as its own little mini so. Also, the t-shirt promo that I mentioned in the last Noise Boys is still gonna run until 413 Funny Homestuck number. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'm doing a promo. There's a new store, it's a spread shirt. I got a bunch of new merch up there, and everyone that's $15 and higher on the Patreon, I've got a form on there, and it's just you get a free-ass shirt. Like, you don't even have to pay shipping and handling. It costs me more money than I'll get on Patreon, so you can just totally screw me and get a free shirt. But hopefully you'll stay for at least an extra month. We'll see. Enjoy Alex's schizophrenic parenthesis good theories on reality, the soul, and that funky Astro Boy mycelium network. So, I have been doing a lot of research on some very interesting topics. So, as you guys know, I'm a bit of an insane person nowadays. I'm, I'm a little <laughs> a little schizophrenic. When I was a kid, and you might remember this time when we were teenagers, I said I would grow up to become Dale Gribble. Because I knew I had, I, I knew my own tendencies. I knew what was going to happen to me. Now, I did not think I was going to be a schizophrenic little racist chud maxer until... Ted sent me one image that legitimately changed my life. You know what? Let's just talk about it. Fuck it. It's not going to be that long. So, let me pull up this image. I pinned it in our conversations. You guys remember from a very long time ago, we talked about a, a bunch of topic where, where me and Ted were just sitting around getting high on that cherry lime slushy. We were fucking talking about <laughs> life, death, and Mario, where Ted said he doesn't fear death, but I actually said that I did. So... Ted sent me this, like, JPEG from 4chan, which is a guy explaining how life itself cannot be finite. Because the idea of there, the before you were born, there was a death-slash-infinite timeline. Then, for a brief period of time, you are alive. Then you die, and that's just the rest of eternity. That doesn't actually make any sense, given the realm of quantum, like, physics and shit. That just doesn't make any yeah, sense. infinite means there is no start and there is no end, right? Yeah, there can't it, it doesn't it doesn't really work because infinity has to end for for like life to be in the middle of it. Right. There has to be a time where it starts and ends. It's not infinite in the so-called state of non-existence or death. Nothing can exist, meaning time doesn't exist in such a state either. Therefore, if death were to be a real thing, it would happen for the shortest amount of time possible, i.e. no time at all. And life existence would uh, life, a.k.a. existence, would prosper yet again. And I started thinking about this as he shows up with his chart where that effectively Life is always going on, you're just not aware of it. When you die, you don't actually die, simply life continues on without you even realizing it. Now, yeah, and it sounds kind of cr- I'll have this in the description for sure. Mm-hmm. So you guys could see it so we can make a little bit more sense about what we're talking. Yeah. Yes. So the conclusion of this chart is that life is infinite because just just like matter, matter in the universe cannot be created nor destroyed. Matter simply is. Even if I were to take something and burn it to ash, it is now that ash. I dilute that ash and it goes in the water. It doesn't dissolve. It simply gets broken down and, and enters like the water itself, right? Like they, matter changes, morphs, and like twists and turns, but it never is destroyed. You cannot vaporize or delete something, right? Same goes here. His argument is that life itself cannot be deleted. Life, like You might die, but life itself cannot die because it is, much like all matter in the universe, some kind of thing, so thus it cannot be destroyed. Yeah. If the death state was not infinite before you were born, why would it be infinite when you die? Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're kind exactly. of like what he says in the image is like you were pulled out of this death state once. Why would it not reoccur and you end up in the exact same conditions when you die? Right? Mm-hmm. He's effectively doing a scientific description. He's trying to like use a science explanation of how reincarnation can possibly exist. And I'm like, that's stupid. Like everything you said is total nonsense. But the skill of it turns my theories inside out. So I started looking into this because I was like, you know what? When you put it in the sense of, like, physics and matter, that you can't really argue that, right? Because, I mean, that, that is how physics work. We, we do know that, that is how it works. So that should theoretically be possible. So I started looking up the science of reincarnation by a guy named Dr. Tucker. Tucker is a child psychologist who believes in reincarnation, but not through, like, faith. 
He believes it through science. And I showed you a couple of these charts that he made from his big, like, fucking story and shit. And he started talking about how, like, um, consciousness itself simply doesn't go away. It simply either dissipates or it transfers to something else. So say, like, you die, it's just put into, like, some new body that is born, right? Mm -hmm. because life itself cannot be destroyed and it cannot be created it simply changes it moves you know now i started thinking about and looking this into it because he brings up a lot of interesting points but there's some things that like even me being curious kind of just doesn't like because what he focuses on because he's a child psychologist or a psychiatrist and he, he's like a well-respected doctor he's not some crackpot like old man right like he, he's respected he talks about his interviews with children and past lives and shit and he talks about how like all the children claim that their past lives are like the same gender as them. They say they died some uh, unnatural death. They say that most of them died around the ages of 28, which is a very interesting t uh, thing to say. And they, mm -hmm. they say that the time between death and their birth was about 16 months. However, whatever memories they do have is very faint and they fade with age. Now, I was very suspicious about this because you can very easily just pass this off as just kids just making random shit up to, to get attention to be on like a guy's book, right? Very mm -hmm. easy to just, just disprove. However, it was when I read further down with his hypothesis and a man named Max Planck agreed with him. Now it had some weight. So mm -hmm. if you didn't know this guy named Planck, I've actually schizoed out about him before to you at, at like four in the morning one day, so you might have remembered the name <laughs> Planck. So Planck is a guy who discovered the Planck length as well as the Planck limit. Effectively, it's a unit of measurement of, like, physics and the universe. I'm not even going to try to explain that because I work at a fucking Walmart. All you really need to know <laughs> is that he effectively discovered and found and proved that there is a limit to the universe on a micro scale. So, unfortunately, for uh, Ant-Man fans out there, you cannot zoom in, you know, can you not shrink down to another dimension? There's actually, like, there is a... Like a bedrock. There is literally a minimum value and like space in the universe. So naturally that would of course mean that there is a maximum limit as well too. So the universe itself is not infinite. Thus it is not uh, forever. And that actually does apply to physics because like I said, things are not created or destroyed. They're simply twisted and turned and changed. Mm -hmm. So that even goes on like a universal scale. And side tangent, that's actually the Max Planck is a big guy in um he, he's his work is used to cite um simulation theorists where they, they're like, well, we discovered there's literally a <laughs> limit to the universe, so what's to say like it's not all fucking fake? However Alex, however that, I that, want you to know what's when up? you started talking about him, he's like, actually, he was the basis of I was horribly worried you're about to say like, yeah, there's this like clan in this like gotcha game that's based no, on his no, ideas no, i was no, gonna be dumbass. so disappointed in no you. dumbass i've actually i've actually looked at like actual research for this for once in my fucking life no no, no. shut up shut up shut up listen 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 listen, listen. <laughs> I'm so listening. one of the things one of the things tucker and of course max uh, notice one of the things in quantum physics you might know and you probably know this from uh, high school in like physics or whatever about like lights and ra waves and radiations and shit that mm -hmm. some things in the universe like the smallest particles and electrons and shit they only actually do anything once they are observed, which is such a weird phenomenon. But that's, what well, one, a point for the simulation theorists, I'll give them some credit there. But also, it is a very interesting phenomenon that he brings up with the whole universe and consciousness thing, is that everything that we see around us is all of us just perceiving it. It only exists because we are perceiving it. Existence mm -hmm. itself, much like, much like the whole basis of quantum physics, only exists while it is observed. And so he believes that something is similar with consciousness. That consciousness itself is effectively like that observation forming and materializing. Now, because think about it too. Like, do you remember what it was like before you were born? Of course not. You don't. And you remember it's, what it was like when you were a not, baby. Yeah. And there is no consciousness before you came around, right? You just don't perceive that. So he, he, he hypothesized that like consciousness creates the world. But it also, like, the world's existence is inherently dependent upon it. But he also follows that the brain itself isn't required for consciousness to exist. That's what he kind of gets off to. That the consciousness is like this separate thing. It's mm -hmm. We link it to the brain. That someone's like brain dead, they're not necessarily conscious. But he says that it exists outside of that. Now, he goes on this whole thing 
about like reincarnation and stuff. And I kind of like lost me on that because while well, it is very interesting talking about the consciousness and like this energy and shit, I don't really believe that you can fully remember yourself when you if you die. Even if like you die, like you remember like you were like an old man or something, you like fell down off a staircase. Uh, Jeff the Killer shot <laughs> you, got hit by the straight bullet at a birthday party. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't fully believe in that. But what I did start thinking about was. I can kind of believe that consciousness itself is effectively just your soul. I started getting a little faith-based on this, which might mm-hmm. you might not like, but I started thinking about this, that the soul is effectively a faith's way to describe what consciousness is. Because it does feel special. But consciousness itself, like, we think the soul is uniquely human, but consciousness itself is very clearly not uniquely human. Because I can tell you my dog is very clearly a conscious animal, right? Animals are very clearly well. conscious. Well, you're th- is you're he conscious gonna... or is he reacting to like stimuli? Like, does he have like, does consciousness just mean that you're awake and you're reacting to things like a bug rolling on the ground? If I step next to it, it'll see like the vibrations like, oh, fuck this. Right. Yes, and then like walk uh, away. Is yes. that conscious or is that just being alive? No, yes. Consciousness. So alive, consciousness, sentience and sapience are all different things. You're thinking of like sapient and like sentience. I'm thinking shit. of sapience, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, like, like a bug is very clearly alive and aware of its surroundings. It's also it's a dumb fucking insect, and so it's not a sapient creature. It can't really like think for like a long period of time. It just does things. Same goes for like we're humans. We are alive. We are conscious. We are aware and perceive everything around us. We think. We are sapient and we are sentient. Right. We, we are all of these things. A dog is very clearly alive and conscious, and but it is not very smart. It is not very sentient or like very sapient. And like a I monkey. Can tell, by the way, what's up? By how close you were to your microphone, you turned around to look at your dog when you said that. <laughs> yeah, I was looking, look at look at my little man sitting there. He's like, huh. But like <laughs> you're not aware that you're alive, dog. Yes, exactly. So when I was going through my research, I was going through all of this bullshit, thinking about like consciousness, the soul, and like energy. Because I'm fully on of the like of my own theory on this is that when we die, our consciousness is effectively a form of energy that is within us. Because like everything's energy. We we literally have electricity in our bodies. So like, we get static shocked, it like makes us jump, right? And that's not a, that's not a dumb fun theory. That's just how the universe works. Yeah, everything's yeah. energy. Consciousness itself is a form of energy that is kind of like coagulated together and that is uh, formed together and we are constantly seeing things through this coagulation of energy, right? That, that, that is effectively what we are. But it's not necessarily unique to us. So it's not like it's my consciousness. Consciousness is just the energy in my body that is perceiving things. If I were to die and my consciousness transfers to someone else, that's not me. Right, that, mm-hmm. that, that that's just that's just formless energy that allows my my. I'm going to use a mysterious universe term for you, Tad. It's, my meat automaton flesh puppet to perceive <laughs> things. It's like the the Alex OS system is being transferred to another human. I might be getting ahead of you with this with uh, support for reincarnation, mm-hmm. but like some people would be like, um, what about all the cavemen? And it's like, bitch, you think time is linear? You're insane. You're dumb. You know how many humans have been around since the beginning of time? They just went somewhere else. Fuck out of here. So <laughs> went to another planet. So you are getting ahead of me because I had a very interesting hypothesis while I was digging through this stuff. Because I started thinking of... So quantum physics works on a, like a universal scale. Everything's like gravity, physics, and energy based all across the universe. Like literally, gravity on a universal scale is effectively if someone puts a, their foot down on a mat and starts fucking like lowering everything, right? Like everything works on mm-hmm. physics, even outside in like space. Everything works the way, and like nothing on Earth is necessarily unique to Earth. Like you can find iron on a, on a fucking rock in space, right? I think the only thing that's like unique, not like not uniquely here, is like platinum, and that's like a that's like an asterisk, maybe. I'm not even entirely sure about that one, because that one might be fucking disproven at this point. But, like, the, everything that exists in the universe also still exists here. So, once again, hit you, hit Mr., you know, Mr. Plank and Mr. Tucker with my own hypothesis. What's to say that the human con- that our consciousness is not necessarily unique to human? What if it's not necessarily unique to this planet? Here's where I'm going to hit my crack pipe and start talking about Mysterious Universe shit, all right? Just- well, you're going to hit your Rick and Morty bog from the store. I'm going to hit up my fucking, fo- my focused fucking weed, my spoken at Astro Boy, all right? Now, <laughs> so who's to say that our consciousness itself doesn't leave this planet? Because consciousness or the soul, whichever you want to call it, 
What is the weight of it? Is it impacted by gravity? Does it bend? Is it like light? Is it a wave or a particle? Is it a solid, liquid, metal? Is it even matter? What is it? What mm-hmm. is exactly consciousness? We know it's some kind of energy, but that's a lot of things are energy, okay? Like food is energy, but food is obviously solid, right? Like what does that mean? So, well, so like with energy, like is time energy? See, that's something that I wanted to think about too, because when I'm thinking about, because gravity is like, be all in all of physics, gravity. Gravity is like, base level everything in the universe is affected by that. that 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 is everything light itself can be bent and distorted by gravity right time itself can be distorted with time dilations around like a black hole and shit like right like gravity's the be all and all everything right that that that's that's basic flaw uh basic fundamental law of the universe is is thing 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 weighs something right mm-hmm. so i started thinking like much like light can be bent, but it takes you know very strength, like, you know, very strong power of literally like the strongest thing in the universe to bend it, right? So what's to say that, let's say we die, our consciousness leaves, you know, our body, our, this energy leaves our body. Why does it stay on Earth? Like, is is the gravitational pull of say Earth enough to keep it here? Does it stay here, or does it go somewhere else? Not necessarily mm-hmm. trying to say there's an afterlife. What I mean is, is that the energy in the universe is constantly recycling itself. Because there was a, a, a problem I came up with a with a dissenter, a fudder, right? A fear, uncertainty, and doubt that I was talking to you about this. And he's like, well, that can't be true because reincarnation can't be true because there had to effectively be an equal amount of humans at all time to be constantly recycling, right? Mm-hmm. And we know that's obviously not true because more people are born than they die currently in our current year. So that wouldn't yeah. make any sense. And I started thinking about that. So I started thinking like, okay, well, what if human life what if life on the planet itself is not necessarily unique to just the you know, humanity? It's, it's all life is some kind of energy. So when we die, we disperse around the planet in some kind of way that life itself is being recycled. There might not be an equal amount of humans, but there's probably an equal amount of life. If you were to actually count every single living thing ever, every single bit of every fucking tree, plant, bug, and piece of fucking algae, if you were to actually t- tally that, which is p- basically impossible, but what if it was equal? What if that is how it worked? Because everything in na- in nature does recycle in some way. So What's to say are that you saying that like, from a comedy standpoint, it would make sense that the insects are just leftists, right? Like, <laughs> I was going it's with funny that. to think of it as that, right? What I, what, I, what I was thinking about is that the Gaia theorem of planet Earth itself is one living organism, and we are effectively its cells. I think that's not as crazy as it sounds, because I think this hmm. energy thing with the consciousness actually plays into that, that we, effectively we are one constantly rotating and recycling mass of uh, life. So where did you hear about that? I haven't heard of this. This is the first time I've ever heard about the uh, the Gaia theorem outside okay. of like... <laughs> Fucking so, uh, Gnosticism and shit. So the Gaia theorem, I actually heard it from What If Alt Hist, a political guy. He actually used it as an excuse of uh, what the, the Gaia theorem in his mind is what the great filter is. The reason that we will never leave the planet is because we, we all filter ourselves out. Before we ever get too big, we'll collapse under our own weight, right? He says that's the Gaia theorem. Uh, the Gaia theorem's... The Great Filter is effectively the antibodies to stop the planet from getting out of the whack, and no species can ever become too dominant on it. That 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 is the Gaia theorems. That, that, that's his take on it. Is like a political take on it. But I think of a more of a, of a this crazier fucking you know Astro Boy level take of what if we are all just this you know effectively the cells of this one big living organism that is planet Earth. Everything's constantly being cycled out. Everything, everything is dying and everything is being either de- break, broken down, decayed, and uh, transferred all around. This is where yeah, I get like into... How, uh, in our own bodies, red blood cells and shit, they're always dying and they're being recycled, right? Yeah, what, what's, what's, like, how do you know that that's not happening here? I'm talking about some crazy shit, but once again, if you actually think about like, it's not really that crazy because just applying the laws that we already know about other organisms and physics and shit already, and you're just applying it to just how you know we die because yeah. for whatever reason like life and death has been this really interesting thing that we have never truly fucking understood even though we know all things live and die and like return to the earth in some way again matter mm-hmm. is decayed and broken out in some way so why would that not apply here this random guy on 4chan has a good point what's to say that it, it doesn't get dispersed or transferred around the, Dr. Tucker thinks that you, a piece of you, will still live on in these other things. I'm going to be a little more cynical and think that, like, when you die, like, you're not going to ever really remember you. Like, Tad, I could have been some motherfucking, like, old man who slept on a fucking bar of soap in his, in his bathtub and died, right? Or, like, 
that I could have been a fucking beaver, right? Like, it doesn't actually matter because it's just energy. We're not going to really know about any of this. It is effectively just an energy being constantly recycled. But what I'm trying to get at is that I don't actually think it is just a black void because that simply wouldn't make sense given what we know about everything about physics, right? When I actually started looking into this more. But when I started thinking about more about the uh, the life and death and decay thing, this is when I started getting into, into like mushrooms and shit. Because as you know, mushrooms are fucking weird, dude. They're not plants, but they're not animals, but they can communicate with each other. It's fucking insane. Mushrooms are the nuttiest thing on the planet. Yes, they are not alive, nor are they dead. Dad, I'm not fucking scared of you. You can't kill me in any way that matters. So, like, the thing that's really weird about mushrooms is that they're, they're made out of, like, shit called, like, mycelium or whatever. It's this weird strand of cells and spores all bundled up in this bundle of joy that siphon energy out of decaying matter. Then they disperse their spores and they effectively, like, just die in air quotes. Then they disperse, right? They're really weird. They come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. They can be little moldy things of fungus. There can be the weird ones that look like ears. They can be the classic old toadstools. Like they, they all come in weird things, th- weird things. But have you ever heard of the mycelium network? Uh, yes, we Ooh. did actually. This was in Revival. We did this with uh, Michael's character. He had a uh, a little like fungus cat that like would go around. There was like a bunch of fungus with like stones. Mm-hmm. And uh, it went crisscross across the, the United States and, like, created a mycelium network. Yeah. So if you didn't know, mycelium networks can attach themselves to the trees and can effectively communicate with the trees for their pollination as well as the transfer of uh, nourishment between them, right? That's fucking weird. How the fuck does a mushroom do that? But most importantly, of course, the most famous example of a weird mushroom doing a weird thing is, of course, the cordyceps. Everyone knows that one. But when you really think about it, how does that work? How does it know where to go and what it's doing? It can't see shit. Now, you're meeting Because you have to think about its goals. Yeah. So its goals that you want the ant to get up somewhere where you can spread more spores. How does something that we don't understand as being conscious or alive understand, one, getting up to a higher area means you can spread more spores, right? And two. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the ability to convince an ant's brain to do that. Ooh, you don't know. So check this out. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something even scarier. It doesn't affect the brain. What it does mm. is, you know how bugs are like, they use, uh, what do they use in their body? Because they, they were kind of like little hydraulic presses in their bodies, right? They yeah, don't yeah. have like bones, right? What they do is the cordyceps fungus infects the ant or other insects. You can do like grasshoppers and spiders too. It will replace the the muscle mass and the little hydraulic shit with mycelium and it'll control the body but not the brain so the ant is just looking as it's as it's getting controlled if you didn't know Whoa, that by the I way i know that yeah i so thought it's, it would it's, basically <laughs> tell the ant like it would shoot a bunch of chemicals into its little ant brain to be like go this way good no. this way bad go that way i didn't know that it would control the arms and legs That would make too much sense. The fact that it actually does puppeteer it makes less sense because now you're thinking like, okay, how the fuck does it know what to do? That doesn't make any fucking sense. It's like, okay, you can, a lot of things that animals do, you can just check up to, they just have instincts from learning from like, you know, biology and shit. That like, obviously like an otter knows to bash an oyster on its chest because it just knows to do that. So you can, you can argue the mushroom knows to do this because it's just an instinct. How does a mushroom have instinct? (laughs) It doesn't have a brain. It doesn't have eyes. How does it even know when it's up a right altitude? It's not looking through the ants at the eyes of the ant. We literally have proven that it doesn't affect the fucking head of the ant. It affects literally everything but the head. There's no, like, processing power in a mushroom, you know? Yeah, but it can effectively do these things. So one of the things I was thinking of, part of the decaying process is mushrooms feed on decaying matter. How do you know that that is that little bit of that unexplainable energy is around the mushroom. That's just how it how it can function. That phenomenon is effectively that, that what's powering that mushroom is that energy. That's what I was thinking about. I thought that's crazy as fuck. Hits hits the Astro Boy, but I'd fucking believe it. I could fully believe that the mycelium network is effectively made up of the little bits of us that die that are still like powering it. That that form of energy that we can't explain. Because it is something that's crisscrossing like everywhere. I mean. In the air that you're breathing right now, like, there's probably mushroom spores, right? Like, it is fucking everywhere. I mean, there's literally mold in your fucking house. It literally is everywhere. 
But then I started, I started like, I, mean, I was going on two different tangents. So the, the mushroom one I thought about, because part of the, like, again, it's just part of the recycling process. It's not this crazy theory. It's simply part of the disposal and recycle process of the, the body that is planet Earth. We, mm-hmm. we like to think we are special because we are smarter than others. We can create all these cool things, but we are still like part of nature and we are still here and we will still die and ultimately decay and return to the planet and be part of the recycling process no matter what. That is an inevitability, right? So even as we have advanced and gotten all better, I still think that fundamental law of nature still binds us there and, and like our energy is still part of it. If the energy, this universal energy, is stuck here on planet Earth, so let me hit up some of that uh, that old dirty biker. So Alex, okay. what you're saying too with this is that once again, Bionicle got it right. <laughs> We're all on the body of Mata Nui. Yeah, effectively speaking, we are we are on the body of Gaia, the Gaia theorem. Yeah, but like if you take it past Bionicle. Like there are several cultures that do have the idea of like you are on the body of you know oh, yeah, yeah. some I mean, we, god or something like that. I mean, I mean the Norse mythologies we were built on the body of a dead giant, right? Like like a motherfucker. That's not that, that's not that crazy. It's more like or uh, Aztec theory is uh, the planet Earth is like a Lovecraftian old god that is constantly stirring to be awake. You need to feed it. You need to feed it blood to keep <laughs> it sated and shit. If you didn't know that, that shit's wild. Though, that used to be the old theory. The new one was, um, they had to feed blood to Huetzalcatlipa, I can't pronounce his name, the, the warrior sun god, to yeah. fight his, his sister and his siblings, the stars and the moon, from a destroying earth, but he has no blood of his own, so you have to give him blood to power himself. <laughs> anyway, but side note, let me, let me hit you on a different theory. Let me hit you, let me hit up that, uh, that fall of 97. So, <laughs> what if, Tad, what if... Our souls are not bound to Earth. Our consciousness, the energy that we are made out of, is not bound to this place. Because much like light hits here, but it's not magnetized here. It still goes further out, right? Light can only be stopped mm-hmm. by like a black hole. What's to say these these waves, this radiation, this this these particles that make up our our perception of reality? What's to say that isn't bound to Earth? What's to say that when we die, this consciousness, this doesn't go to some other like human? In a different planet. Because much like how nothing is unique to planet Earth, I think there are just other Earths. I actually don't think there are weird and sanctuary aliens out there. I think there are just other people. Because with nothing we have found in space has been unique to space. So I'd have no... Why would life be unique either? Think about it. Well, when you say you've, we found nothing that's been unique to space, what do you mean by that? There's nothing that we have found out there that we haven't also found here. Like, we haven't found a crazy mineral that is not also just on this planet we have not found like like what's on the moon moon rocks which is just just rocks and ash because it was like effectively like a meteorite we haven't found like a crazy fuel source we haven't found like anything we haven't found any kind of the gas we can go to other gas plants and they're the same kind of gases that exist on this planet right higher concentrations obviously but like like the helium planet still made it a fucking helium right like it's it's not different so what's to say that life isn't different either like, probably just, just, just a human with a dog on, on planet fucking Zeta Prime halfway across the galaxy. What's he's to say that's about, not true? He's talking to his friend, talking about how they're going to be smoking that cupcakes or that Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nah, they're, they're smoking that for profits. So, <laughs> so, I went on a completely different rant of what if the souls are in space? What if we are just, there's more people out there? But then I came across a really funny article that I think you might like. It was from a guy named Ian Lovett. It was called, Could Aliens Have Souls That Need Saving? A newly Hell discovered yeah. planet prompts Christians to ask whether they're obliged to take the gospel to extraterrestrial life forms. They found You're the planet. Yeah, right. Alex, let me tell you about a little game called Helldivers 3. So they found a planet called Proxima B. Proxima B is what the scientists call the Goldilocks zone, where the temperature mm-hmm. is just right for life, and it has water. So effectively, if we could get there, I mean, hell, effectively, life could be there already. Like, that, that is perfect conditions for life to actually exist. So if there were extraterrestrial lives, is it our duty as Christians to spread the gospel of God to extraterrestrial life forms? <laughs> so, Alex... <laughs> you have not seen Starship Troopers, right? I have seen the original Starship Troopers, actually. 
Do you remember how the war starts? Uh, they tried. I don't remember actually. It's been, it's been someone was in high school. The Mormons tried preaching to the bugs, and the bugs ate them. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I think you just predicted what we're gonna be like in about a about a hundred years. I'm optimistic. I think a hundred years. But but anyway, what the point of Proxima Centauri B or Proxima B for short? Uh, it, it lives in fucking <laughs> smoking uh, that Proxima B. Got that sh- <laughs> got my alien Zeta dog. I'm smoking Einstein's pipe. All right. Now listen. <laughs> so, it's an exoplanet orbiting with the habitable, z- the habitable zone of the red dwarf star Proxima Centauri, which sounds badass as fuck. That is. How far away is this? It's not in our galaxy, right? 4.2 light years away, aka 1.3 parsecs from Earth. It is in the constellation Centaurus, making it in Proxima D. <laughs> A little pushback on your theory here. Sure, sure. And this is one that I heard that I'm like, fuck, I hate that this makes sense. So probably we're the only ones in our galaxy that have evolved this far. Because think of how many other fucking planets there are in the Milky Way, right? Mm -hmm. If at any point before now, any of them evolved, they would have... If you get to the point where you could cross planets... You'll take over the galaxy within like a thousand years or whatever, right? Yeah. And that hasn't happened. So like probably there's nothing else in this galaxy. Yeah, right? that's, we're that's, probably that's... alone here outside of like bacteria. So about that, that's what the great filter is, though. The great filter is simply that no civilization across our world or in the, in the universe will ever make it to the stars because they will simply collapse under their own hubris and weight. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's an active process that's like, ooh, these guys are getting a little too uppity. Time to squash them with the invisible hand of the market. No, no, but what I mean is, is that, like, that's part well, of why like, he thinks about through. The- yeah, have you heard of the probability bottleneck? That's, like, something I hear a lot when people talk about this. It's, like, yeah, the, the, chance, the we- chances of life actually occurring on this planet are so fucking astronomically low that other life existing is basically zero. But I still don't well, believe no, it's, that. it's... The probability bottleneck, although I think it does apply there, but the one I'm thinking of is, like, the Cold War. Like, the odds that we survive through that means that we're definitely one of the lesser infinities, right? Which Mm -hmm. means all this other crazy shit, instead of, you know, infinity, infinity, like, actual greater infinity amount of worlds, right? The odds of, you know, shit going down at the Cold War was so low that now we're in, like, a smaller subsection of the universe, where we didn't nuke ourselves to shit. There's still an infinite amount, but it's a lesser known infinity, right? Yes. However, I have a counter thing to that. So I'm still going on in my human theory because I've, I've doing mm-hmm. all my research. I actually fully don't believe in aliens in the alien sense. I think there's just humans in the galaxy. I'm fully on, in on we are. By the way, if we find out other humans, the God created us in his image theory holds a lot of weight, Chad. I'm just saying. It do. But, 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 I fully believe that there are only humans in the galaxy. But here's something I want, I want you to think about, Tad. Think about what humans are at a base level and why we have evolved to what we are. Because to evolve to, say, having a podcast on the internet <laughs> isn't a normal human thing. That only happened given certain environmental circumstances that caused us to, say, develop these tools and then had to uh, have conflict with other people who developed tools, which required us to then develop more advanced tools over and over to one up each other. Right. You ever go to the mm-hmm. uncontacted people like uh, in the world, they stay in tents. They stay in huts. When humans are actually left alone and aren't forced to evolve, they will stay in one way for like literally eternity. So how do you know we're alone in the galaxy and those other planets don't just have pure humans in their tribal state, in their natural state? They had no reason Mm -hmm. to evolve because their environments didn't make them evolve. It just has to have the conditions to allow it to happen in the first place. You yeah, know? like if, if, if the weather wasn't bad enough or the, the people weren't bad enough, you know, to, to force us to you know, require to make guns and rockets and shit, they would have no reason to leave the planet, right? So like mm-hmm. that, that theory is, is that I think there is other humans out there. They're just they're just what humans are meant to be. 
They're they're just the tribalistic, superstitious, weird little shaman people. Hey, like, the the monkeys vibing through history on these <laughs> on on Proxima B. I do not think we're gonna find random creepy insectoids. I think we're only gonna find other random types of Homo sapiens. Maybe there'll be Neanderthals too, for all you know, because we have proof that there were other types of humans. They could be another type. Mm-hmm. They, they could be like weird, uh, like humans with bigger noses or something. Yeah, you know, like like Neanderthals. But I, I do not think yeah. there's going to be like I do not think there's going to be blizzard or bug people. I think there's just going to be other types of Homo sapiens or Homo erectuses out in the universe. I should I should I should specify like that. There there will be yeah. other types of us that may have like longer arms or something, but they're still going to be you know you know looking like this, relatively speaking. Yeah. They're going to be gonna human. be big upright monkey men. Yeah, exactly. Because it's just kind of like the most optimal. Mm-hmm. It allows for tool usage. And once again, to go back to how this all started, there, if that is true, I fully believe that there's an, if this is a universal scale thing, that there would be an equal amount of life, you know, that energy in the universe that is constantly being cycled through. I mean, after all, the universe literally goes in a circle. It literally spins in a spiral. The lower limit of the universe. I didn't know that. That's actually very interesting to me because I didn't mm-hmm. know that uh, there was a hard limit that they found. That's like, yeah, this is just the smallest thing it can get, which means probably you can't go bigger than a certain amount. Yeah, yeah, and then that's, that's the thing. That, that's part of the theory of we're not going to find it anytime soon. But if that is true, there's you know if, if that we can visibly prove that you know there's a minimum, there's a bedrock, you know, to, to the universe. There's gotta be a, there's gotta be a firmament then. There's, there's gotta be an upper limit too. There's gotta be a ceiling, right? There has to be a wall. If we go forward in one direction for a thousand years, we're gonna hit the wall eventually, right? Mm-hmm. So that'd be interesting. I do personally think that the uh, I think the universe might be a sphere. Personally, what I mean is that everything in the in the universe seems to turn into some kind of ball or spiral shaped thing that goes in, in a circle, right? So I don't know why the universe. Sorry, I don't think the universe is a square. I don't think we're a box in <laughs> in Rick's fucking car. I think I think the universe is, might be just be a really big dome, a really big orb. Yeah, things tend to uh, things tend to spiral. Mm-hmm. I know that's like a thing that is like noticed all over the world, like in like microscopic scales and things like that. They kind of mimic how galaxies are and shit. Yeah, again, universal energy constantly cycling around. I'm, I'm fully in on this schizo theory, even though it's, it's, it's mostly just a hypothesis. It's hard to prove mm-hmm. a lot of it, after all. But it just, it makes a lot of sense because it does apply to a lot of things you already know about physics already. So, like, like it's more of, like, why wouldn't it work? Because the only way you would say it wouldn't work is if you're just kind of like, no, when you die, nothing happens simply because that's just what happens. You, you don't actually mm-hmm. have an answer for why you don't for why it wouldn't work other than just like you just don't want to believe it right you know what i mean yeah and which is funny because then like it's like trying to find like this explanation this like scientific style of explanation kind of ends up in the end it wraps right back around to the religious explanation right yeah it's well, like, because if you reli- believe this theory then this is how it could work and it's like well you can also believe in the theory of like you know the christian creator right Remember something about it comes right back around. Remember something about like religion though. Religion Religion and like mythology and shit. Those are like explanations for things that they couldn't necessarily explain. That has been morphed over like eons of like word of mouth, right? So like I do Mm -hmm. think that early ass like tribal humans did see some crazy shit that they wrote down and thought was a god. Like we know like the Battle of Zeus versus Typhon was literally a volcano erupting, right? With it was a volcano erupting during a thunderstorm. So they thought, oh, it's the gods battling, right? So like when, Dude, when that goes hard as fuck. Yes, yes. It was a, yeah, a lot of people died, don't worry. <laughs> but like that that the that we literally know what happened in like that version of their mythology, right? Or like I talked about like, the aboriginals in Australia, like the Wowie was literally the Megalos lizard because thousands of years ago, the ancient tribal uh, aboriginals of Australia literally lived alongside the Megalos lizard, but they called it the Wowie and the, you know, over the course of like 2000 years, I think they, you mean uh, I think you mean the Yowie, not Yowie, the Wowie. Whatever. whatever. Australian you, words are funny. Do you know about the aboriginal dream time? No, actually, I do not. Yeah, you can. You should Google that up. It's like something that's pervasive throughout all their cultures of like navigating like an astral realm. Which, so, by the way, so RuneScape had like three different skills that they were doing. My skill that I voted for was fucking uh, druidism because you went to like a spirit realm, and I think that is like the coolest shit ever. Just want to keep it with the gamers in the audience. You know, I had to give them an audible version of uh, of Subway Surfers. <laughs> 
Thank you, thank you, Tad. Very, very intelligent. My point is, when, when, when the ancient people said they saw the god Zeus fighting the fiery, like, demon of Typhon, you gotta think of what do they actually mean by this. When they yeah. said... When uh, the ancient Aztecs said, at one point, the green sun hung really low for 50 years, and because of that, the giants died. What the fuck did they mean by that? <laughs> what Dude, the fuck Alex, does that mean? <laughs> Alex, whatever you do, don't look up the uh, the false moon theories where, like, <laughs> a shitload of ancient cultures would draw the sky, but there was no fucking moon, and then the moon just suddenly appeared. Don't Google that at 3 a.m. <laughs> okay, okay, so... <laughs> Ted, Ted, please, I know, Ted, listen, listen, I didn't even get to the dream part. So, <laughs> dream part? But my point, this, is, this goes back to the consciousness. What the fuck are dreams? People like to be futters and say something like, uh, it's your brain defragging because we're dumb, weird flesh meat automatons. Now, that might be true, Ooh, and it probably I is. I got something to say about that. That's interesting. So... Something that uh, a lot of like scientific like articles trying to like theorize about shit, right? When clockwork was like a huge thing. Oh, the universe is running on a set of gears and everything clicks like that. Oh, hey, we're into computers now. Your brain just defragging. The world must be a simulation. Yeah. People want to see whatever like the current thing around them is and extrapolate that to the entire universe. Of course, That's, like, of a course. Known of course. pattern. Yes, 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 of course, of course, of course. But what I was trying to say is, is that with dreams is, if consciousness is a form of energy, how do you know that isn't the consciousness effectively doing some freaky shit outside of your body? Mm-hmm. How do you know that the Homestuck dreamlands are not actually real? Okay, Chris Chan. <laughs> Alex, I want you to know that's literally what Chris Chan believes. <laughs> <laughs> that the OCs are okay, Alex. So debate him. The reason people debate liked him. Chris Chan was his <laughs> weird fucking Sonic Two comics, right? Do yeah. you want to know his explanation as to why he doesn't make them anymore? <laughs> why? Because alternate universe Chris Chan has already done it, so he doesn't have to debate him. <laughs> I I don't think I can. I think he would block me on Twitter, Ted. You say alternate universe. I say it's Chris Chan living on Proxima B in the fucking uh, Centaurus cluster. Fucking shit, dude. What if Chris Chan is the apex human? I'd be so fucking mad. What if you go there? What if you go there? No, shut up. What if you go to Proxima B? There's a big fucking like stone monument to Sonic Chew. What do you do? What do you say? I would fall to my knees and curse the name of Mary Lee Walsh. (laughs) You don't even recognize that. You're not a true Sonic Chew. You don't show up to the miscreant Sunday stream every Sunday at 7 p.m. Central. Now, Ted, I don't want to talk about the false moon theory, but did you know that no ancient cultures had a had a name for the word blue? They didn't know what the color blue was, even though, you know, the sky is blue. That's weird, isn't it? That sounds like some bullshit. No, no. Blue is the last word any language develops. Hmm. Control T to open a new tab. The that only cul- blue shit. <laughs> the only culture that had the word blue in the ancient <laughs> times was uh was Egypt because they had blue pigment. All right, Alex. So I googled that blue shit, and then I really <laughs> should have seen this coming. Healthline.com. Blue poop causes and when to see a doctor. <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited for the next Google update where they change that to just be like an AI that'll just tell me, actually, it's okay that your poop is multicultural in colors. Listen, 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 listen. Chat, that's, that's basically what, what, what I've been doing, though, is that, like, I'm fully in on this universal energy recycling theory thing. I'm full in on this. I now no longer fear death. I simply just want to know which one is it. Are we? Do we become mushrooms or do we become aliens? That's what I really, mm-hmm. that's what I want to know because I, I or do we say here right those are, those are the three possibilities that happens with with our life energy. Do I just wake up and gotta go to fucking work tomorrow? Do I wake up and am I Christian on Proxima B? Do I wake up and I'm a funny mushroom and I take over some insects and then fucking die? Do I wake up and I'm some kind of weird beaver? Because I, I fully believe that life is recycled. I feel like it is impossible for anything else to possibly exist. It's really just a matter of what type of recycling are we at here? Because I've basically just been just been hocking up this uh, 4.5 star rating, uh, this lead poison, and just talking about <laughs> random shit here. 
it's very interesting. These are the kind of conversations that I enjoy having with you. You know, you're not complaining. Of, you know, actually, you know, I want to wake up in the universe without those fucking liberals. Am I right? What if I go to Proxima B and it's it's a, and it's only populated by leftists with blue hair? Oh, God. Well, Alex, that wouldn't happen because the planet would have probably exploded by then. The great <laughs> filter would have reset it. No, no, because they'd, they'd all be in their tribal state, so they'd be pure and not contaminated by communism. It'd be over there like these fucking berry pickers. These fucking berry pickers. Dude, when I get to my next body, I am so gonna start hunting those fucking Proxima B mega beavers. You got I am not gonna <laughs> pick those fucking uh those those fucking Mandarin OG berries, alright? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna turn this shit into Ark Survival Evolved. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone play that game? And if you've seen them run around, they're like this, they're like little bug people. They zip around at 80 miles an hour. It's absurd. The little bug people smoking that good Alaska Thunder Grape. <laughs> Thunder Grape? That's what it's called. It makes you euphoric. <laughs> I want fedora tip. To quote my favorite tweet ever made, is the natural state of the soul quiet or chaos? 30 year old podcaster <laughs> look buddy it's transient shifting like water <laughs> yes it is it is 1000% it, it is a constantly flowing state Woo. so like I said at the start this was kind of cut out from the last episode so I'm recording an outro after the fact I found it really interesting to hear Alex's theories and as such in this episode I didn't really provide a lot of rebuttal I mostly just kind of let him explain his point of view right I don't really agree with his idea that the ideal human is a dirt humper in a tent because we are capable of a lot more and to deny that feels wrong to me. The guy a filter can eat shit. Anyway, so you can find the podcast as usual on iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Patreon in the description, the new store is in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, there's actually it's like built into the page, which I didn't know that would happen with that store, but I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's all for this episode, so thanks for listening, and I hope you guys have a good day.